Ahmad Arabic, Ahmed is a common male Arabic name. Other spellings of the name include Ahmed, Hamd and Ahmed. Etymology The word derives from the root hmd, hmd from the Arabic amada, amad, from the verb hamida, hamida to thank or to praise, non-past participle yamadu, yamadu. Lexicology As an Arabic name, it has its origins in a Quranic prophecy attributed to Jesus in the Quran 61–6, about Muhammad. It also shares the same roots of Mahmud, Muhammad and Hamid. In its transliteration the name has one of the highest number of spelling variations in the world. Some Islamic traditions view the name Ahmad as another given name of Muhammad at birth by his mother, considered by Muslims to be the more esoteric name of Muhammad and central to understanding his nature. Over the centuries, some Islamic scholars have suggested the name's parallel is in the word paraclete from the biblical text, although this view is not universal considering translations, meanings, and etymology. Traditional Islamic sources, such as Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, and others, contain hadith in which Muhammad personally refers to himself as Ahmad. Islamic scholars such as William Montgomery Watt, however, argue that the use of Ahmad as a proper name for Muhammad did not exist until well into the second Islamic century, previously being used only in an adjectival sense. He concludes that the development of the term being used as a name in reference to Muhammad came later in the context of Christian Muslim polemics, particularly with Muslim attempts to equate Muhammad with the biblical paraclete, owing to a prophecy attributed to Jesus in the Quranic verse 61-6. According to the New Encyclopedia of Islam, and the Older Encyclopedia of Islam, the word Ahmad has no etymological attachment to the word Muhammad, but instead has been defined and understood according to its form and likeness to the word Muhammad. Interpretations and meanings of Ahmad Development Regarding Ibn Ishaq's biography of Muhammad, the Surat Asul Allah, Islamic scholar Alfred Guillaume wrote Coming back to the term Ahmad, Muslims have suggested that Ahmad is the translation of Periklutos, celebrated or the praised one, which is a corruption of Periklitos, the Periklete of John XIV, 15 and 16. Topic: <laughs> Ahmad passage. Here are three translations of the passage in question in Surat 61, verse 6. And mention when Jesus, the son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, indeed I am the messenger of Allah to you confirming what came before me of the Torah and bringing good tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name is Ahmad. Quote, but when he came to them with clear evidences, they said, This is obvious magic. Sahih International. And when Jesus son of Mary said, O children of Israel, Lo! I am the messenger of Allah unto you, confirming that which was revealed before me in the Torah, and bringing good tidings of a messenger who cometh after me, whose name is the praised one. Yet when he hath come unto them with clear proofs, they say, This is mere magic. Pickthal. And when Jesus, son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am God's messenger to you, authenticating what is present with me of the Torah and bringing good news of a messenger to come after me whose name will be acclaimed." Quote, but when he showed them the clear proofs, they said, This is clearly magic. Modern literal translation The verse in the Quran attributes a name or designation, describing or identifying who would follow Jesus. In his farewell discourse to his disciples, Jesus promised that he would send the Holy Spirit," to them after his departure, in John 15 verse 26 stating, "...whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth shall bear witness of me." John 14 verse 17 states, "...even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, for it beholdeth him not, neither knoweth him, ye know him, for he abideth with you, and shall be in you." Regarding verse 61 to 6 in the Quran, it is not clear to whom the pronoun he refers in the concluding sentence. 
Bell says probably Jesus, but sometimes taken to refer to the promised messenger who is identified with Muhammad. Secondly, and in consequence, the intervening words, bearing the name Ahmad, are grammatically superfluous. They do not help to make the pronominal reference any clearer as to who it was whose evidences were greeted as magic. Without the clause about Ahmad, the context would appear to demand that it was Jesus rather than the next messenger who was intended. Whether we maintain the usual reading or adopt that of magician as read by Ibn Masud and others, the charge of sorcery generally would seem as true to the Jewish calumnies in the Fourth Gospel as to the somewhat similar charges brought against Muhammad. In any case it was the Banu Israel to whom both Jesus and the messenger came, and who regarded the mission as sorcery. Once more, if we omit the phrase, bearing the name Ahmad, and regard Muhammad as still drawing lessons from previous history, the dubious passage might refer to what happened at Pentecost, and other incidents recorded in the earlier chapters of the Acts. With the absence of any claim on this passage either by Ibn Ishaq or Ibn Hisham, may we go further and suggest that the two Arabic words rendered by Dr. Bell, bearing the name Ahmad, are an interpolation to be dated after the death of Muhammad, emphasis in original Topic. Scholarship regarding the Greek translation Early translators knew nothing about the surmised reading of Periklutos for Periklitos, and its possible rendering as Ahmad. Periklutos does not come into the picture as far as Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham are concerned. The deception is not theirs. The opportunity to introduce Ahmad was not accepted, though it is highly improbable that they were aware of it being a possible rendering of Periklutos. It would have clinched the argument to have followed the Johannan references with a Quranic quotation. Furthermore, the Peshitta, Old Syriac, and Philozenian versions all write the name of John in the form Yohanan, not in the Greek form Yohannes. Accordingly, to find a text of the Gospels from which Ibn Ishaq could have drawn his quotation, we must look for a version which differs from all others in displaying these characteristics. Such a text is the Palestinian Syriac lectionary of the Gospels which will conclusively prove that the Arabic writer had a Syriac text before him which he, or his informant, skillfully manipulated to provide the reading we have in the Sirah. Muslim children are never called Ahmad before the year 123 AH. But there are many instances prior to this date of boys called Muhammad, very rarely is the name Ahmad met with in pre-Islamic time of ignorance Jahiliya, though the name Muhammad was in common use. Later traditions that the Prophet's name was Ahmad show that this had not always been obvious, though commentators assume it after about 22 ah. It has been concluded that the word Ahmad in Quran as Saf 61-6 is to be taken not as a proper name but as an adjective and that it was understood as a proper name only after Muhammad had been identified with the paraclete. Note that by the middle of the 2nd century AH, Muslims already identified Muhammad with the Greek word Paracletus counselor, advocate or the Aramaic translation Menahamana. Topic Historical document regarding the topic text of the correspondence between Umar II and Leo III, we recognize Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as the authors of the Gospel, and yet I know that this truth, recognized by us Christians wounds you, so that you seek to find accomplices for your lie. In brief, you admit that we say that it was written by God, and brought down from the heavens, as you pretend for your forkhan, although we know that it was Umar, Abu Tarab and Salman the Persian, who composed that, even though the rumor has got round among you that God sent it down from heavens, God has chosen the way of sending the human race prophets, and it is for this reason that the Lord, having finished all those things that he had decided on beforehand, and having fore announced his incarnation by way of his prophets, yet knowing that men still had need of assistance from God, promised to send and the Holy Spirit, under the name of Paraclete, Consoler, to console them in the distress and sorrow they felt at the departure of their Lord and Master. I reiterate, that it was for this cause alone that Jesus called the Holy Spirit the Paraclete, since he sought to console his disciples for his departure, and recall to them all that he had said, all that he had done before their eyes, all that they were called to propagate throughout the world by their witness. Paraclete thus signifies consoler, while Muhammad means to give thanks, or to give grace, a meaning which has no connection whatever with the word paraclete. Topic transliterations Ahmad is the most elementary transliteration. It is used commonly all over the Muslim world, although primarily in the Middle East. More recently, this transliteration has become increasing popular in the United States due to use by members of the African American community. 
Ahmed is the most common variant transliteration, used especially in the context of the Ottoman Empire. This transliteration is also used throughout the Muslim world. Ahmet is the modern Turkish transliteration. Modern Turkish uses a Latin based alphabet, and most Arabic derived names have standardized Turkish spellings. Um, the less common transliterations of Ahmad are used by Muslims outside the Middle East proper, such as in Indonesia and Russia. Akhmet is the fairly standard transliteration used by South Africa's Muslim community, and its pronunciation shows evidence of the influence of Afrikaans. The which represents H, H is pronounced as an Afrikaans X, i.e., closer to the Arabic cage, and the D, D is realized as a T, closer to the Arabic T, which follows Afrikaans' final obstruent devoicing principles. References. <references>